Well, hello, it's me again. Um, I just want to talk to you about some nettles, actually. Nettles are amazing. They are, uh, they grew, belong to lots of different scientific groups. Um, gardeners would put them into herbaceous perennial. Herbaceous is the, um, the, the group of plants altogether, okay? And perennial means they come back year after year. So the nettle. Why do I like the nettle so much? I actually admire this plant honestly do admire this plant it's very clever the way it's evolved has been amazing now everyone knows nettles sting stinging nettles okay but why do they sting this is the question we need to ask ourselves why do they sting well this plant has learnt to protect itself okay so if you think about it if you think that you are um, um, an animal that likes to eat vegetation Okay, so you would be a, um, a horse, for example, or a deer, okay? Um, if you wrap your lips around a nettle, what's going to happen? Mm, the inside of your lips, which is really, really tender area, will get stung because you're very gentle with your lips. Mm, 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 do that. There's not a lot of not a lot of pressure there so actually the way that the stinging nettles have evolved to sting are, is quite clever so they will sting because they've got little uh, tubes that have poison in that, that live on the outside of the leaves and up the stems both sides of the leaves um, and they literally get broken if you brush past them so if you crush your hand really heavily around a nettle the likelihood of you getting stung is quite slim Okay, but if you brush your hand really softly across it, you will get stung because you're breaking those filaments and the poison is coming out. And that's how it's evolved, which is really clever, I think. Um, so I just want to show you, see if I can get up close and personal. Um, it's probably in the sunshine. I'm going to get up close and personal. There you go. Can you see in the sunshine? Can you see those tubes that run up and down the stem? And let me turn that over. You can see them on the underside. You can see them on the underside? I hope you can. They're really, really small. Okay. This also, this nettle here, I hope you can see it in the sunshine. I did pick one, hopefully, to say that you could see them. The nettle is also a really important part of the food chain. I'm going to walk on now. Because a nettle, not only is it something that animals like to eat, uh, but it is also, um, as in the big mammals like to eat, but it's also a home and a feeding ground for aphids and other small creatures like that. And you will find that if aphids like it, um, other creatures get drawn to that plant. So, for example, um, in my forest school's wood, we've got a lovely massive clump of stinging nettles. And at the right time of year... You can see it all happen in front of you and it's fascinating. All the green fly arrive, so the aphids and the green flies all love the sap. They live off the sap of the nettle. So they will literally go on there and they'll drink that sap and that's what they survive on. And they breed and they're happy. Now because they're there, they in turn bring in predators. Now predators that eat those Aphids, green flies, will be things like uh, wasps. They take them and feed them to their, um, <clears throat> their young in the nests. So they feed it to their larva and pupil. Pupa, sorry. But you also get things like ladybirds. Because ladybirds, when they lay their eggs, and you generally find that they lay their eggs on nettles, when their eggs go into the larva and pupa stage, um, they are carnivorous which means they eat meat. And their favorite food, you've guessed it, is the aphid and green fly. So these clever ladybirds actually lay their eggs very, almost on top, very near a massive food source. However, ladybirds are very clever because ladybird larva and pupa are actually in their own right um, food sources. So they have things that, oh look, I've got a lovely little bird down here. It's just fledged, I think. It's a blackbird that's just fledged. See if I can get you on the path. Can you see it? Look at that. And you can see it's young by the, 
by the um the beak because it's still got the coloring the food coloring because when they open their mouths when they're young um it, there's a bit here um that shows that they're quite young so i'm going to try and get that into the path because there's another dog coming and i don't want it to get attacked go on go on that's it go on up you go go on 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 that's it good boy go on then that's it no there's another dog arrived i don't want it to get attacked sorry there's a bird down there that's um Fled, just fledged, so oh, I didn't want right. it to get dug by the dogs. Uh, 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 stay there. Oh, this is exciting. Look, it's still there. Can you see it in the path? No, just stopping my dog because obviously it's game. There you go, it's going through there. Hopefully, that will take off now because it's out in the open. How exciting is that? Right, we'll carry on. Right, come on then, Bobs. Okay, so where was I? Um, ladybirds, ladybirds. Um, oh yes, they're really clever because they will actually lay dud or sterile eggs because obviously their eggs are sought after by things like wasps and other things that eat them. So they will lay them at the top, right at the top of, um, of a nettle, a little bit away as a decoy, but they're sterile so they've got nothing in them. And then they lay their actual eggs further down the stem, really near where the aphids are. So it's really clever. Very clever. So it's all part of the food chain, which is really important, and the ecosystem, which is really important. Because if you lose one part of the ecosystem or the food chain, it actually affects a massive amount of things above it, because obviously their food source has disappeared. So um, we're not there yet. We're not there with ladybirds yet, but hopefully we will be. They should be coming out in the next month, and you should start see should start to see them lay their eggs on the nettles and actually once the nettles have the green fly and the all those kinds of things that are attracted to them they've just started to get them now if you have um the honor of having nettles in your garden or even if you find a clump of nettles just sit down take a little picnic sit down and watch because nettles are amazing for attracting in different kinds of insects they are truly amazing and, um, and we call them a weed. Again, it's a weed. It's just a plant in the wrong place. And they are amazing at reproduction. Um, so the way that the nettle grows is actually under the ground. So it spreads via runners under the ground. So it's very efficient as well. There you go. There's my thing on nettles. Hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoyed that little, um, little fledgling blackbird. That was quite a treasure to see, wasn't it? Anyway, right, I'm going to go now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.